Hello everybody, this is Christian from Blue vs. Orange TCG, come back to you with another Transformers TCG video, this time with another first place deck profile, but it's not me uh, showcasing the deck, it's uh, it's our lovely user and player from the ATP Discord, Frank, who kicked the rest of the opponent's teeth in in this month's event with Superion of all things. Uh, and I, I don't know about you, uh, Frank, but I love Superion, and I was super excited to see you get into top 8, and you just kind of... You just kind of cruised through top eight. It was it was excellent. I thought. Yeah, to be honest, um, well, if I'm honest, it was actually quite a uh, a lucky roll of the dice because uh, Superior, mm -hmm. believe it or not, wasn't actually my first choice. I oh, really? ended up doing a dice roll um, at the two decks I built, and uh, Superior on one. So <laughs> that's literally how I ended up playing Superior. Um, yeah, I've always loved him out of all the combiners. And yeah, it was a fantastic experience to be honest. Uh, win the event with, like you say, with Superior on the whole phase. Yeah. Did you? How was your matchups through most of the uh, most of the events going through the Swiss rounds and then top eight? Was 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 there any matches that you thought were either uh, surprisingly pretty simple for you to play through, or like ones that were actually much harder than you anticipated when actually going up against them? Um, I to be honest, um, this the PS matchups I had wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I even had a Fort Max um matchup, which um, I was not looking forward to that, but um, I ended up actually winning that 2 0, which I was really surprised by that myself. Um, to be honest, yeah, it was it was quite a um, I had quite a few four wides, um, played Overlord. Mm -hmm. um but yeah even um quite a few like obviously with the new legends and everything like that star screen was my biggest um my concern mm -hmm, but sure. yeah they all went pretty well excellent well let's why don't we just get into the to the uh, deck profile here then yeah so basically character wise as you expect as uh you know typical uh the four wide start uh, mm -hmm. Silver Bolt, Air Raid, Five Flight, and Skydive, mm -hmm. with uh, Alpha Bravo in the KO. Um, yeah. Like saying before, like Alpha Bravo was mm -hmm. kind of there if um, if there was a planes matchup, possibility of sideboarding them in. But other than that, it was it was pretty quite simple, and obviously the you know the heroic spotlight and the coordinated tactics, uh, ATP's uh, amazing strategy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, I've, I'm curious what your thoughts are on this, but every time I've seen Superion play, or I've I played him a little bit in ATP two, would you? Who would you say out of like those like Alpha Bravo, Firefly, Skydive, and Air Raid, uh, excluding Silver Bolt, which would you say has probably the most like important early game uh, ability wise for the aerial bots? Because I've always thought it to be Air Raid, because I I just think like yeah. being able to just break an upgrade. Uh, just anyone's upgrade is amazing. Yeah, massively. I actually had one matchup against um, Kafka's uh, four wide Pierce, mm -hmm. and he cyborged in. Uh, I think it's Razor Claw, the one, um, the Predacon um, combiner piece, mm -hmm. who allows you to uh, um, attack and tap the, um, enemies. Yep. And he literally went straight for air raid and literally just took him out straight away. So uh, yeah, Air Raid, still even to now, quite a lot of people forget about his bot ability, mm -hmm. which um, yeah, I try and at least um, before one combine, I would like him to be able to kick off that ability to like get an upgrade, whether it's off the biggest character or even a little character. Absolutely, I I've seen I've seen turns where Air Raid swings into. Um, a character with like a pocket processor on them and just blows up the pocket processor because people people just don't think about it right especially you know given people hadn't played superion before the custom card scene popped up in quite a long time so people i think just forget that air raid oh yeah just blows up anything i put down and with silver bolt uh giving all of you guys pierce i imagine it's even simpler yeah. to just blow up anything you want yeah because obviously pre before um, Silver Bolt's uh, ability for giving um, the PS1, sometimes it would literally be a case of you needed to flip that black pip or have a PS weapon on him to try and get his trigger to um, to work. Mm -hmm. And now with Silver Bolt, it's always kind of like a guaranteed ability that will trigger. Awesome, yeah. And yeah. then, um, and, and then you didn't. Uh... 
I guess to get just get to get into the cyborg characters early, you didn't have a cyborg character registered for this event, did you? No, it was um, it was basically how I built the deck was kind of like um, you know just done just done the four bases and then uh, basically Alpha Bravo was in the cyborg. Mm -hmm. um, I did contemplate on bringing him bringing him once in the whole of the event, but in the end I chose not to. Um, you know the base two attack PS3 is nice, but then when you've got like you know the PS1 and the bold one. He's kind of not doing more PS, um, guaranteed PS value unless he's actually got an upgrade on him or if mm -hmm. you can boost up that attack. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, why don't we get into the battle deck then? So we've got... Basically, I'll show you the, the upgrades. The... So we've got... The right way up. Oh, other way. Yep. All right. There we go. So I literally my basically my ones. Uh, I run one copy of Nobles Blaster, one copy Lock on Lasers and Sturdy Javelin. Mm -hmm. um, the other one, to be honest, are quite to me kind of quite straightforward with a uh, Superion build. There's the Amp Hovercrafts and our Blaster. Two Energon actors and amazing card. Uh, to be honest, one of my favorites, uh, Fusion Boris. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Incredible. I card. love that card. Yeah. So we, it was basically built on the sense of um, trying to get, like, you know, get the PS, um, guaranteed PS's um, up. A um, little bit of, um, you know, ping damage and on attack damage. And uh, the handheld blasters, obviously, with the double blue. Um, I will admit, first time through the whole event, in the top eight match was the first time I actually played a handheld blaster. Oh, man. And I actually played it on, yeah, I played it on Superion when I could not find a, uh, I couldn't find an upgrade at all. But um, it, it worked out all right, because obviously Superion's built in bold one. He ended up having bold two, and he swung for something like, I think it was like I had another upgrade on him. He hit for like seven PS seven, so mm -hmm. the ball to the ball uh, handheld blaster actually benefited in a way. That's that's, a, that's always interesting, especially with a lot of these like blue black pierceless, right? Where the handheld blaster actually starts to not feel as terrible. Like you still don't like seeing them in your opening hand, but it's like it could be worse. Like if it's the only yeah. thing in your hand, it'll, it it might get you an extra damage, right? Which you know, is it's not too bad. What do you? What did you yeah. think of um, only one sturdy javelin? Uh, the one sturdy javelin. To be honest, um, I I run another one in my sideboard. Mm -hmm. um, it was basically a case of um, I run enough um, other cards in the deck to be able to um, obviously do non-attack dam uh, non-attack damage, mm -hmm. and I didn't want my white count to kind of go a bit crazy. I needed some greens in there. Sure. So it was, yeah. So I kind of just I run with the one javelin. To be honest, I don't even think I even played it that much through the whole event. Mm. Interesting. I find it really. I, I find that kind of surprising. Um, only because um, when I when I've seen Supreme builds be be like built right, they usually lean one of two ways. Either they are really heavy on the the direct damage right because Supreme gets that extra one when dealing with yeah. single direct damage for the turn, right? So Sturdy Javelins can turn into deal three. Um, uh, Camion Crashes can be deal three. A lot of these interesting cards, right? Or they really lean, which I think, if I can guess correctly how you're leaning, really heavier on the Pierce, right? Seeing the three Fusion Boar, wanting to make sure that I'm hitting for Pierce my attack every time I attack, just about. Um, is that kind of the correct mm -hmm. assumption? Yeah, I kind of built the deck in the way of um, even if it was like, say, um, going in for attack only for five, but it was like, I would kind of like, again, that guarantee, it was basically kind of getting the always guaranteed damage. Yeah. You know, that whether they were always like five or seven, it was always pierced no matter what. So it's like, okay, like playing a fusion ball on when the little guys where the base attack is only like. Um, you know, it could be anything between like three to four. Mm -hmm. I would always be at least getting um, PS5 out of that, or maybe more. 
Sure. You know, so we, yeah, so it's like, you know, there is some, um, you know, non attack damage in the deck. Um, but yeah, I did want it to go for guaranteed damage numbers in the deck itself. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Uh, one last question before uh, we can move on to the upgrade. Uh, the armors is um, uh, how was the one mainboard lock on laser, uh, especially coming into this event, right? Um, yeah. There was no Menasaur because it was a T1 event, and he recently just got booted from the T1 format. So what what kind of things were you expecting to use this lock on lasers against? Um, to be honest, I didn't actually have a certain character in mind. It was mainly due to the um, the plus one attack, the PS one, mm -hmm. and with it being a green, mm. um, I like um, some of the problems with playtesting I was having. I ended up um, having cards in my hand that I didn't want, and then found out I didn't have enough greens in the deck. So I was like, right, okay, I want I want some one ups in there to see how the deck goes. And um, lock on lasers. Um, to be honest, this seemed like the okay choice for it. Um, you know, the plus one PS one, okay, when it's on superior, arm, that plus one and PS one kind of tallies up quite a bit for what PS outcome you can actually do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and you know, it's good against the mirror match if you ever run into it, which yeah. we might we might see more now that. Supreme took a whole event, right? Yeah, it would it would be interesting to see for sure. Um, I am intrigued if um, Superion's going to pop up uh, in the next event itself. I I would be shocked if it doesn't. But I digress. Uh, why don't we move on to the armors? Yep. Yeah, so um, move these to side. Um, armors. We've got uh, literally one one reflex circuit. Mm -hmm. uh, two smoke pokes. And to be honest, I only run one and then one uh, spinning gear. The it's armor simple. count for this deck is really low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And kind of interesting, too. The the sprouting gear and reflex circuits make a lot of sense, you know, given you're mainly a blue deck. The smoke cloak uh, <laughs> is rather... It makes sense given uh, Silverbolt's like, main uh, proc ability. How did you feel only running two? Was there ever a point where like that number felt kind of weird to you, or like do you wish it was um, just like something else, or wish you ran three of them? To be honest, it was originally free, but um, I actually hate smoke cloak. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of smoke cloak. It's, it's like you say yourself. It's a it's a blue black. It um, is like really good on the trigger as well. But other than that, if there was a different, say, uh, blue-black um, armor or just a different card in general, mm -hmm. I probably definitely would swap out the Smoke Cloak. Um, I don't think I ever played it as well in the whole event. It was a case That's probably of always playing the reflex circuits. Yeah, it was a case of literally playing the reflex circuits or the, um, the spam gear. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I... I think a lot of people share your sentiments on just hating Smoke Cloak. Is it yeah, is a, it's, it's a handheld blaster style card, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I, I say you bang on with that for sure. To be honest, it's like one of those cards where you even get in your hand and you just look at the rest and you're like, okay, yeah, it gives tough one, and you're in a blue deck, but it just feels weird playing it at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this it's the reason why, like, obviously, like I needed some hammers in the deck. Uh, because originally it was literally does free smoke cloaks, um, the reflex circuits, and that was it. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up dropping the one smoke cloak and then replacing it with a sparring gear just because of the green. Um, the orange, like you know, is a bonus on the attack. But I was finding quite a lot of the times um, I was struggling to get armors, so I needed another armor with green. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Was there any other armors that? You you wish you played mainboard during the course of the events. Um, to be honest, uh, my my sideboard, um, I have hollow matter in there. Mm -hmm. Um, Magray was one of my biggest concerns in this whole um, this event. Obviously, playing like playing all, playing all bots in general, especially being a uh, a four wide team as a superior on the get Magray. That's like eight damage. Eight damage. Um, right. yeah. I was quite lucky to that only ever happening to me once while I was at, I think like once or twice for the whole event I actually got mag raid mm. and uh, the one time I actually chose not to combine 
and then my opponent literally mag me. Oh, I'm out of that. Yeah, it, it was a horrible feeling. Yikes. <laughs> and then, like, in one of my other, I think actually in one of the top eight, yeah, um, the, the top eight events I played against uh, Snapdragon and uh, two, uh, two Decepticons. I didn't want to combine then, but I noticed he was flipping mag rays, so I was like, right, I've got to combine. Right. I can't take damage. Yeah, you don't want to take that eight to six damage just for free. Yeah. Right? It's not worth it. Yeah, it can, it can really set you back, especially being a combiner. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, very cool. Uh, why don't we show you those uh, those utilities then, those sweet utilities. Yeah, so moving on to the utilities is basically absorption core and two... Uh, am I playing this the right way? Yeah. Yep, you're good. Uh, two aerial defense augments. Um, yep. To be honest, the aerial defense elements, I did want to go for the uh, the double blue ATP card, mm -hmm. um, heavy artillery. Hands free artillery. But yeah. Whenever I, yeah, whenever I build a deck, I kind of don't count the aerial defense as as a white blue. Mm -hmm. I just class it as a blue because then I don't mind if I'm running like I'm running like uh, I think it's five whites in the deck in total so it's kind of like if i if i want to pop it there um if i want to put my whites up for like say six or seven i don't feel too bad because mm -hmm. the aerial defense has to do with it um and it's such a good card it is such a good card for superior absolutely yeah it, it it is a for utility it's a very very strong card it makes sense that's a star card to say the least and especially with the um with the other card absorption core seeing Playing just about every deck these days, right? Like, you being able to play this and just move one damage is kind of like shocking how relevant that can be in a world where Absorption Core exists. Yeah, originally um, Absorption Core originally was Hollow Matter, mm -hmm. but then um, I was kind of like I quite like obviously with the um, with the strat jump with first time you do non attack damage. I uh, at one point I had a. Um, I had an absorption core on Superion and decided to replace it with the aerial defense augments. And then obviously, oh, I had to go slow with that turn because I was like, hang on, I've got quite a few triggers here. Yeah. I kind of never actually been that until I actually played it. That, you know, it's like that can do two damage and then that can move one. And then even then, I can have a, um, say, um, an action to, to play then as well. Um, like, say, a Kamion Crash because I'm technically then. Okay, I'm moving a damage, but then I'm healing mm -hmm. a damage. Yep. And then I'm using Kingdom Crash, and it's like, okay, kind of doesn't really change me from where I was, but I'm getting two extra damage on someone. Absolutely. I, I, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think, I think this this utility suit makes a ton of sense. Um, the only, I guess, the only thing that I'm curious about is, did you ever consider um, either Energy Pack or Enhanced Power Cell, especially Enhanced Power Cell, given it's a black for the triggers and pierce right did you ever consider putting those in the deck i used to play enhanced power cell and then um everyone it got to a stage where um utilities utilities were coming massive in the game yeah so obviously then everyone was building um you know you had crushing sizes pretty much were kind of running like every single deck whether it was yeah. in the main or in the stone board mm -hmm. and then i always found um I don't know, it's it was almost kind of like a bit salty, the fact that I play an energy pack, okay, it keeps that person alive, and then I attack, and then my opponent attacks him, it's like, okay, he's, he's alive on the energy pack, and then my opponent will literally just remove the energy pack from him and then go into another character. <laughs> Terrible so, uh, feeling. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it was kind of like, okay, I'm getting quite fed up with this, um, energy packs are going, and um, with how much health Superion has in general, um, I don't know, I just kind of feel like he kind of don't need the health boost in a way because he's so huge with the health sure yeah that makes sense that makes a ton of sense all right then so that's how many upgrades is that total then so in total the upgrades was it was 20 upgrades 20 upgrades a straight 20 very nice yeah I was, yeah I was literally running 13 weapons uh four armors for utilities hmm very nice, very nice. All right then, let's see those act actions then. Right, so the actions, let's move down. So we've got, let me 
make sure you can see it. Yep, you're we good. Two, two scan animals, and then we got three long range volumes. Uh, two payment crashes. We got one valiant effort, two belligerents, mm -hmm. and then two steady shot, and then there was one one disarm. Okay, interesting. There's a there's a lot of interesting things to talk about here. So for so why don't you go through uh, kind of one by one each card and, and kind of explain like how relevant each card kind of was for you mo in most uh, of the tournament because these there's a lot of there's a lot of unique action choices here I think. Yeah, um, to be honest, the stat mission um, obviously you know basically straight away uh, it's a blue black. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's quite an interesting one as well, because obviously you can do a damage to, to a character um, you can draw to. Um, obviously, if I'm in a, if I'm as a superior on, and my opponent's throwing a character at me that needs two damage to die, it's like, okay, I'm just going to scout mission your guy and then go into your other character and KO him. Mm -hmm. But I basically kind of use scout mission before I combine into superior on. If I'm wanting those better upgrades um, for when I'm superior on to hit harder, mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it's that's it's basically a good draw card before I'm superior on, and it is a good card for the trigger. Yeah, that makes um, a lot of sense, and then, it can kind of fill your hand a little bit too, if need be. Yeah, because obviously then as well, when he's superior on, if he's got thirty damage, like you know, he he basically turned into a pocket processor. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Um, we got a uh, long range volley. Um, to be honest, with you, courtesy of you, um, when we were talking previously, with regards to uh, you were the one that uh, I think I was only running possibly one or one of it or one or two. And I ended up, uh, yeah, I ended up changing it and running three. Uh, this card literally became a um, pretty much became a legend star screen killer for most of the event mm -hmm. um it was it is a phenomenal card i, I can't stress enough how good this card is mm -hmm. is like uh, you know it just gets you out of those tricky situations and i like the fact that um it's a two-part one so it's like you know you can you move a damage to an enemy and the second part is you may the fact that second part is you may is massively because I found myself where um, I was like, if my opponent's got a hollow matter on, it's like, okay, I can still move damage, but then I don't have to do damage to myself. Then you just block it with a hollow matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can still use it to move the one damage to a team full of Autobots uh, and not have yeah. to deal yourself with damage, even if you know, there's, they run no Decepticons. That, that is that's yeah. really huge. It's massive, it is. And then uh, we got the typical Camion Crash um, with Superior on. Okay, I'm, I'm running two. Um, I don't run an extra one in the sideboard. Um, it is, I was running three, but then I kind of popped up the long range volley and went for the Camion Crash because um, obviously, with all the ATP's new legend characters, Star Scream was. I've, I just expected to see him everywhere, and I expected to see a lot of um, Decepticons. For sure. So I went with the three, uh, three, two. Um, King and Crash with Superior on again is is such a good card. Um, you know, if if it's the first time I play it as well, while I'm Superior on, that's doing free damage. It's massively. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, we got two. Two copies of Belligerence. Um, I was always like, um, Belligerence was always a card that kind of kept on going back and forth between my cyborgs and my main. Um, mainly because I kept on playing it wrong. Um, <laughs> I kept really? on playing it wrong in the sense, I kept on playing it wrong in the sense of um, forgetting that when I'm playing it on my little guys, I still can't trigger oh, the flip. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, I was kind of like infuriating myself a little bit. I was like, oh, I wish I never played that card. <laughs> but um, yeah, once it gets to superior, on then or like say you hit with your last character before you um, before you combine, which most of the time is Silver Bolt. Mm -hmm. um, that damage can go up quite a bit, and uh, it has come in very handy through um, through like some of the um, 
you know the, t the top eight matches itself as well for sure yeah do you think yeah especially given like uh atp 3s metagame was really blue focused it was you know a heavy control metagame do you think still being able to have that belligerence to even just like push for just pure raw numbers into some of these orange decks just be like okay with my bold one and my handheld blaster to get the extra bold one if i hit two more blues with this belligerence i can one shot the orange deck uh uh exact if need be is that something you kind of came up with quite a bit yeah definitely because even though like my deck was built around doing um fairly consistent pierce numbers mm -hmm. um the issue then was if i was going into an orange deck you know they're not bothered about blues in their deck or anything like that so it's like okay i need a way to get yes i can do consistent numbers but i need to get a higher base attack number against us they uh say an uh an orange build deck with a character that has one defense it's like okay yes i'm going into it and i can guarantee pierce numbers mm -hmm. but i need something to pop that up a little bit absolutely yeah i like it a lot and we got uh one copy of valiant effort um this is a unique this is a unique what, pick to say the least yeah it's uh i to be honest it was originally two and then i dropped it to one because obviously it you know, first part, you know, if it's uh, one of your leaders gets plus three attack until the end of the turn, it only works on Silver Bolt. Uh, I did try it with two, and I wasn't, I was never getting it. And then even the second part itself, you know, it's um, if you have a ranged card on the, on the battlefield, do one damage to an enemy. When you're superior on, that becomes two. So, um, you know, with um the upgrades you know with the the sturdy javelin the and hovercrafts and stuff like that they can tally up a little bit um i f i think personally this card may end up coming out in the end but then it kind of all depends on how you know uh, i think superior pretty much built for t1 mm -hmm. um played it and constructed um full constructed and it's just i don't know it just it just felt you know, beans like you know you can have the free white type masses and anything goes. It was it was too much for Superion. Yeah, just kind of felt um, like it was behind quite a bit. Yeah, massively to be honest. Um, even though I done quite well in the last um, full con, even I think I actually played Superion on one of them. Mm -hmm. It does. It felt like such an uphill battle for the whole of the event. For sure, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Plus, like, I would argue. Um, Supreon's like absolute worst matchup like in the game is ATP Menasaur, who also is kind of fooling around there in full con, so there is also that kind of issue as well. So that makes that makes a lot of sense. I would agree with you there. Yeah, I've, uh, I've never I've played against the ATP uh, Menasaur and god that that thing just hits like a truck. It, it <laughs> yeah. hits so hard. And it can defend quite well as well. He can stay you in know? full con. Um, he can stay in full yeah. con. Yeah, I'm kind of glad he went from T1. <laughs> I mm -hmm. think that's why uh, Superion was a, a choice to go in back into T1 with him going out of it. I agree. Absolutely. And then um, we basically got uh, two copies of um, Steady Shot. Um, basically just for that, you know, extra attack boost, like like say like going into um, orange builds. And it's good for um, hitting the trigger. Is a uh, is a blue-black. Um, and then we got one copy of the Sam. Um, the Sam was basically um, pretty much dope. I have very little removal in the whole deck, and um, I kind of wanted. Obviously, I didn't want a removal card that was like an orange or anything like that to throw off the deck. I was kind of looking uh, reprocess. I kind of didn't want. And then um, yeah, I just thought right, I'll go for another blue card. Um, disarm, you know, it helps like say when my opponent like plays a force field, I'll just do the disarm so that I know my pierce numbers are going to matter then and it's not going to be um, chucked off by a force field. Um, but yeah, it, it, it has made, it has given his worth in the deck to be honest. Yeah, it, it, I was going to ask you about that because that's the card that sticks out to me the most out of this like list of actions currently. 
Um, would you, because in the previous metagame where it was heavier control, Disarm saw a lot more play um, because people were able to ramp up upgrades pretty quickly. In, in the aggro, in, in a more aggro focused metagame, I, I don't see Disarm played as much, but so would you say that it was pretty good or would you, do you think you wished it was something else? Like, do you think it was maybe like a smelt or a catch off guard or even just like a vaporize? I actually, um, I actually play a catch off guard in my sideboard. So mm -hmm. it was a case of if I needed that extra because it's very low uh, count of um, removal in the deck. Yeah. Uh, if I needed the extra removal, I would have put in a uh, catch off guard. Um, if I'm honest, like I don't like smelt. Sure. Um, yeah, giving the uh, your opponent the uh, the choice to choose what they like. I suppose it's not too bad if they've already got the one upgrade out, and it's like say it's a pocket processor, and they don't play anything on the next turn. You can like smelt it, and they got no choice but to drop it. Mm -hmm. I think the yeah the choice to give them what they want to get rid of is kind of always put me off that card if I'm honest. For sure, I I think. I don't think that's a bad way to look at it at all. I think smoke can need to be super good or super bad, like you're saying. Yeah. Excellent. So well, thank you for that. Is um, so is that all your actions, or do you have some more here? This is um, all the actions, and then I've got my uh, my secret actions. Secret actions, sure, sure. Get these to the side. So we've got. Three copies of Despite Any Difficulty, one Sabotage Elements, one End Hostilities, two Concealing Contrails, uh, and then we've got two State World Covers. Okay, so we got some, we got some interesting choices. We got some interesting yeah. choices here. Yeah, it was kind of like, um, obviously, the sabotage elements, you know, is, is basically in there, you know, to help out with the removal. There's such a low count of removal in the deck. Um, sometimes I think I probably wish I played another because I really got that card in my hand at all, if any, um, if any, in the whole, um, whole of the event. Mm -hmm. Um stable cover um obviously you know is like sabotage elements is a blue stable cover is a black so it kind of helped with the balance of um helping with the triggers uh stable cover helped out quite a bit um if i managed to actually draw it as much as i hoped with the whole event <laughs> um because yeah, i did end up playing quite a bit of um ps matchups with um end up playing against um Anzel's four wide PS, um, Ogar's four wide PS, you know, there, there was quite a bit in the PS. Um, but then it was still, they were quite low numbers with yeah. some of them, so it wasn't too bad not having the Sable cover. Yeah, because uh, they can't, it's a, like, four wide black, orange black PS can be a very consistent strategy, but it is, like, sometimes if they run out of gas, right, then those PS numbers just don't hit for as much as you you would hope they would right yeah it's, it's kind of like the you know they got a um, majority of like the four white peers decks will come against they got quite uh quite an average uh, attack level so it's kind of like if they're not hitting the ps values to go with it it's not too bad going into superior on them mm -hmm. um it the stable cover definitely helped even like even if i was putting it down even against a non-ps deck that plus one um that plus one defense being tough too with superior on did tally up quite a bit then in the defense on the attack itself for sure um so there was that and then we've got uh one copy of uh end hostilities so uh pretty much despite any difficulty for me kind of re replaced end hostilities mm -hmm. um yeah it's just Despite any difficulties, as everyone calls it, um, doing the ATP uh, server uh, is called Dad. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just I, I I don't feel right to not at least pay him pay him one copy in the deck. I do run another copy um, in my sideboard. Um, to be honest, which came straight in in the the top eight uh, was it in the actual finals match? 
Uh, my my second NR cities come straight into the deck. Makes um, sense. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's just for those like you know the counters against the really hard hitting aggro decks. And I was quite lucky that through the whole of the event, um, my finals match was the was the big one. Like uh, that that deck I played against uh, Orion Pax with the off road patrol with the strat. Mm -hmm. uh, I watched. Um, the semi-finals match of uh, Wyatt um, playing that deck, and it hit so hard. It's a hard hit. It, it was, yeah, it was kind. It was kind of scary watching that match. It was kind of like uh, mm -hmm. if uh, if Wyatt won, it would have been a new matchup for me. Um, he was playing against um, Kafka um, Anzal, who I um, who actually lost in the um, in the first uh, the first five rounds of the event. Uh, lost against uh, him two one with his uh, with his four wide, um, which fair enough to be honest. I'm not sure if many people know that was the our closest match we actually had um, through all the through all the matches. That was kind of one that stuck in my head. Yeah, because I I lost two one on time, and if. Uh, both of us were just saying how crazy it was because if I had an extra about four seconds, I would have won because I hadn't combined yet. And uh, so basically, um, Ansel won me by health to 30 to 27. Wow. So if I had those, yeah, if I had those extra four seconds to be able to, uh, it was basically I attack with my last character and then timing went, but obviously the way, uh, superior on combines we still had our cards out you know greens were there and everything so the time got called and i wasn't able to combine Man. so it was kind of if i if i was able to combine i would have won 27 to 26. it, it was a crazy close game that's incredible yeah that that's see that's absolutely nuts to me but those are those are times when like you know Time will finish games, <laughs> whether you want it to or not. I've, yeah. I've been in the exact yeah, same definitely. situation before, and it's it, it's it's an unfortunate feeling, but it is a it's a very like, re, it, it it puts you kind of into reality, like sometimes like how slow or fast like a game can be can, can be going at, at times, you know. So it's uh, I I've been there before, been there. Yeah, definitely. I think with my uh, my other two secret actions in that, like I said myself, is the despite any difficulty. Uh, obviously, being a, a blue black, and uh, the effect on it is obviously you know uh, when the defender defender gets plus one until the end of battle for each different uh, color mon uh, mon flip. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of good for um, you know uh, against aggro builds, um, getting belligerents as well. Yeah. Even though it was only up to a plus four, if I if I played that and I had um, say the absorption call. I could at least try and get like six defense out of it, which like, you know, six is better than one. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Very true. But it would be fun. And then um, conceding contrails. So through the whole event, this become my favorite secret action. Um, like I'm running 23 blacks in the deck and this, this card defended that's absolutely phenomenal. I think like this uh, display and difficulty was always kind of like one of my favorite um, secret actions in a blue build. Um, but if you're going blue black, I can't stress enough how good this uh, this uh, secret action is. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a it's a double black, but one's only for a plane. It's, it's such a good card. Well, it, the beauty is it has no cap, right? Like. With that, you have to get all yeah. these colors, and you can only get plus four. But I mean, if you have, like, I've watched you. I've watched you play games in this event where you had the sparring gear with top four, hitting whites to flip like six blacks on defense with concealing yeah. trails, and getting six. I think I'm even incredible. Yeah, utterly incredible. I, it, it kind of, I literally it ended up um, going really well against a, a really heavy aggro. Um, hit and then um in one of the other games as well i had the sparring gear at the absorption core my opponent belligerenced me it was like okay concealing contrails and it was like when my opponent literally tallied up how much he'd done and then he realized how much i defended it was like 
struggle. Like, it is that secret action, like you say yourself, it hasn't got a cap on it. Mm-hmm. It's what makes it a phenomenal card for Superion. And, and like you said, probably just about any blue blacklist. It's that, that yeah. card's incredible. It is an absolutely incredible card. I agree with you. Um, yeah, but that was that was pretty much it for the the, the main the main deck itself. And then uh, my my sideboard, uh, it was uh, I run one copy of Spy Satellite, mm-hmm. uh, one copy of End Hostilities, uh, one Survive, two Infiltrate, uh, one copy of Max uh, Maxim Ship, a Catch Off Guard, Pocket Processor, Hollow Matter. And then there was uh, another copy of uh, Sturdy Javelin. Interesting. So just to kind of brief over the sideboard real quick, uh, was there any card that? What what was the card that you brought in the most out of all the out of all the games in the tournament? And which was the card that you brought in the least? Um, the most I bought in uh, Spy Satellite Uplink. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it just it was such a good card, especially like I think through the event I had. I think it was two or three um, Star Screen match it, matchups. So as soon as like as soon as it went to game two, the Spy Satellite went <laughs> straight in. Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest, um, Survive needs to go. Um, sure. Is I yeah is is kind of like through me changing the deck um, consistently. Survive has kind of been one of those cars that have kind of just just stuck around. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, I, I tried it before in the deck and uh, I didn't like it to be honest. So um, through the whole game, the cards I didn't use to be honest um, was mainly these. So literally all through the games, pretty much all these come come into the deck, and then uh, maximum ship I never used, catch off guard. Uh, pocket processor and survive they never they were never seen through the game itself at all mm, sure sure and would you say would you say that the um the marksmanship like was this just never like a matchup where you felt like the marksmanship never just came into a place because i could like when i see that i could almost see that as a main boardable card um in your in your like 40 41 right but i can see also if you just you know um against the legend characters right after they get to legend mode it doesn't work anymore on them so is that is that kind of like one of your main reasons why you never brought it in very much yeah i think it was because of how much damage i could do pre before they um turn to legend and then being able to do as much um playing damage to them when they uh when they arise mm-hmm. um i felt like i was never in a situation where i needed the maximanship um so yeah i I literally i never used it because it's like um some situations like you know like it's like you know your opponent kind of wants you to like make the character arise and i prefer like okay Mm -hmm. he's the only one in bot mode i want to be at least trying to be doing non-attack damage every turn to a um to a character with max and ship um means it is very specific to a character in bot mode i think that's what made me never actually play the card itself mm. whereas my other cards that do non-attack damage i can do it to wherever i want with it being so specific it kind of swayed me away from not using the card itself in the deck sure sure that makes a lot of sense and you already you're already really high on that direct damage anyway right so it, it, like kind of like what you say it, it would just be like you you would have to make room for it and i don't i mean looking at your list i don't know if you really need to make room for it your your list looks super solid yeah, it's kind of like obviously like between like it's just for comparison, you got a sturdy javelin there, and then you got a maximship. Okay, it would be brilliant if I could have like another sturdy javelin and the maximship in in the actual board itself. But then I was actually finding quite a few of my matchups where my opponent um, majority of times were like in art mode or like with obviously with the legend characters. As soon as they're in legend mode, if I draw that card, I can't do nothing from with it mm-hmm. um but yeah it was like sturdy javelin 
was kind of like the main card that okay if I'm thinking I'm not doing enough um, uh, non-attack damage or my opponent's trying to like force me into a certain character I'll chuck in the steady javelin and just go for the other guy mm -hmm. yeah absolutely well very cool I Frank think, uh, yeah. oh, what were you going to say? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, literally, I think out of all the games I had, uh, Spy Satellite and Hollow Matter were kind of like straight away game two. Majority of the time, they come straight in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that makes sense as well. Um, especially because probably in games one, they may not even see you have the Hollow Matter. So they might just take a Bastion Shield uh, out of their deck. Yeah. And then they put, you put in the Hollow Matter, and it's like, oh, I can't get rid of that now. Yeah, that's what I kind of liked as well, because like majority of people do run um, armor removal, like just as like a static thing in the uh, majority of the builds. So yeah, kind of like the the swap out with that. Um, infiltrate only actually seen game in the in the final match, and um, yeah, it, it done it helped me out a lot in the finals. Yeah, I remember watching it. It it, look, it looks very good, very very good. Well, excellent, Frank. Is there any last thoughts you have on the deck list before we close out here? Um, to be honest, I think, um, depending on obviously how things actually change in uh, the T1 scene, because obviously we got uh, next event is coming up now, mm -hmm. um, hold the lines. Um, mm. They're going in. Sure. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was too many five-star characters that were just doing way too much work for my liking <laughs> and i just found myself constantly like why did i not put in hold the line mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. but on that overall like extremely happy with the deck yeah the deck the deck clearly served you really well i really like it i've really enjoyed the superion play style um and well you but you were playing superion even before like eight to four and you can you can kind of you can attest that he kind of struggled through some of the formats. Either it was because of like uh, decks that just counted it really well, like Menasaur, or it just wasn't the right format. But even like just like the addition of cards like Long Range Valley helped Superion yeah. just immensely. So I, yeah, like yeah, I was I was literally playing I was playing Superion um, still when like the the game was. Um, you know, alive from uh, WTPC. Um, mm. I've literally got my uncut, um, my uncut sheet in, in a um, in a frame up on my wall from uh, doing the Energon, and I literally won that. Uh, well, I got sick for I think it was like eighty other people. I had Superion with me then. Damn. I've always been a massive fan. Of, yeah, I've always been a massive fan of Superion. I went to their um, over in the UK, we had like an Energon trials, and then we had the Energon internationals in London. And I done Superion in both of those events. So I've always been quite uh, quite massive with the uh, with the combiners. Awesome. Well, that's super sweet, Frank. Well, thank you so much for sharing this deck profile, and again, congratulations to you for kicking butt in the uh, the August uh, Tight One event. Um, this is. I think it's great to see Supreon just take it over, and you know you're a fantastic player, and I, and I expect to I expect to see you in the top tables again here. I think I, I think you got real chops here. <laughs> Cheers! Thanks very much, mate. Uh, you know, very much uh, appreciated. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys again so much for watching. Uh, give some love for Frank in the de in the comment section. Let us know what you think of the deck profile. Maybe let us know some changes that you might uh, make if you were to play Supreon uh, at all using Frank's build. And again, thank you so much for watching. Everyone have a great day. Adios.